Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. And this is a new segment that we're trying out called Off the Ice. Uh, one thing that a lot of players have told me uh, while I've been doing this podcast for almost a year and a half is how much they love the non-hockey segment. So I decided to make a podcast all about the non-hockey segment called Off the Ice, where I invite a former podcast guest on and they invite a guest of their choosing. And we talk about anything for around 35 to 40 minutes just to get to know these players more. Um, this week, we have two very special guests. We have St. Thomas women's hockey player, Emma Larson, and she has invited on Minnesota Duluth women's hockey player, Mandy McMahon, on the show for our, the first episode of the Off the Ice podcast. Uh, Mannion and Emma played with each other in high school with Maple Grove, and now they compete against each other in the WCHA. So welcome to the podcast, Mannion and Emma, and welcome to the first ever Off the Ice podcast. How are you guys doing today? Good, thanks. I'm good, yeah. Thanks for having us. No problem. Well, Mannion, let's start off with you because we've actually never had you on the podcast before. So just why don't you introduce yourself to the people that might not know who you are and just talk a little bit about your hockey background, where you're from, and like where you played before Duluth and just about your little, little insight about your Duluth hockey experience so far. Yeah, of course. Well, first off, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on the podcast. Um, I play hockey at the University of Minnesota Duluth right now, but prior to that, I played high school at Maple Grove. And prior to that, I played boys hockey up until high school. Um, in high school, I played with Emma, obviously, and we had a great time there. And thankfully, I was given the opportunity to attend and play hockey um, at the University of Minnesota Duluth. I'm a junior there now, and we've had a lot of success in recent years. Um, most recent, the national championship game and then the year before the Frozen Four. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I, kind of, I do want to ask one question about the Frozen Four experience this year for you. Obviously, not the result that your team wanted, but overall, what did you take away from this year's Frozen Four experience, and how did it compare to the last one you had in 2021 um, in Pennsylvania? Yeah, um, after a couple weeks of kind of letting it soak in, obviously, losing that game is heartbreaking for all of our team, and looking back at it, it's just such a cool experience, and I know a lot of girls would have died to be in that position. So we're very thankful and just grateful for the opportunity that we got. And I'm very proud of my team and I'm proud of the coaching staff, everyone that was involved. I think we did a tremendous job this season and I think we proved a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of teams that we deserve to be in that spot that we got last year as well. Um, obviously with COVID um, the year before, a lot of our Frozen Four experiences weren't the way that it should have been. So this year it was great to kind of get those back. Um, we had a big player lunch that we got to hang out with the teams, do a lot of different activities. We had a big red carpet ceremony walking into the rink. So it was super cool to be treated just like such a big deal in that area and that vicinity. And it was cool to be a part of and I'm very thankful. Yeah, and uh, talk a little bit uh, about the red carpet experience because I'm going to the men's Frozen Four this week. I want to kind of hear a little bit about insight. Emma, do you think uh, Mannion has the best style in uh, college hockey? Because I've seen the pregame outfits that she's pulled off. It's pretty awesome. No, she's definitely an influence to me in the pregame outfit. She has helped <laughs> me a lot with that. So we always send each other what we are going to wear for pregame outfits. So I love to see it, and I've loved to see some of her outfits in the Frozen Four too. Yeah, the red carpet ceremony was so cool. We had all of our parents get there early when we walk into the rink, and then there was media, cameras, everything, and we got off the bus, walked through, everyone was cheering us on. We had the band there um, playing music, and it was super weird and, like, cool to be treated like such a big deal because I think in women's hockey, you don't always get that opportunity. So it was cool that they allowed us to do that. My favorite pregame outfit that you pulled off, if I might say, is the one where you had the red, like, scally cap, if that's what it's called. I thought that was really awesome. I don't know if you saw that, Emma. I think we posted it on the CHT Instagram. So uh, that's my personal favorite. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, Emma, I do want to ask you one hockey question just because I thought this was interesting, but you got to play an outdoor game this year against um, Mankato. What was that like? It looked very cold, but it looked like a good time for your teammates just seeing the IG takeover that Marky did. Yeah, it was extremely cold, but 
every hockey player from Minnesota knows growing up how special Hockey Day Minnesota is. So I'm just super grateful I was able to play in that, especially like first year of D1. But yeah, it was so cool to play in an outdoor rink. And yeah, that was definitely an experience I'll remember for the rest of my life. Now, one question before we actually get into the Off the Ice podcast, but you guys played with each other in high school. What's it like to play against each other in college? And talk about that game that you played out against each other for the first time. It's it's definitely crazy that now I'm playing Manon. Um, we've trained with each other in the summers, and we've grown up playing with each other. So it's super cool to play against her now, but it is a little – it's just a little weird when she's coming down the ice. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is Manon, like my best friend. So, But it was a lot of fun the first game. We had a lot of our friends come out and watch. So, yeah. Yeah. Like Emma said, we're really good friends off the ice, too. So getting to be on the ice in a real-life game was super fun. And um, we kind of uh, gave each other some havoc in front of the net, I think. <laughs> We both got a little mad at each other during the game and after the game, of course, we were best friends again, but it was super cool to play against each other. I think we're both really tough competitors, so it was fun to kind of know what each other is doing since we have played with each other so much, but it was it was such a cool experience and I loved it. It's good that you guys didn't take it easy on each other. I think that makes it, I think that makes the game even more like um, better to play, at least in my opinion, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Now let's talk about, let's go into the off the ice segment. So obviously you guys played with each other in high school. So the first off the ice talk topic is uh, what are some things in high school that you cared about a lot that you now don't care about at all? And Emma, you can start off, I guess. Okay. I would say I was so excited to get my license in high school. I have a late birthday. So I was just so excited to finally get it because all my friends could drive and I couldn't. And I hate driving now, and I try to avoid it as much as possible. I think Manon can attest to that. So I just think that's something that I definitely do not care about as much anymore. Yeah, I would definitely say prom. I think it's a lot of time and money that you spend to try and get ready and have the perfect night. But in reality, all you need is just friends and a ticket to go to the dance. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of good memories, but a lot of money spent for a dress that you wear once. Yeah. Well, I think you could say the same thing about a wedding. So, but I never had a prom, believe it or not. I'm a 2020 grad. So ours got canceled. So you guys have to talk to me a little bit more about what it's like because I never got one. Yeah, it's really, I don't think that too special. It's kind of just like a homecoming or another other dance. You just have a longer dress, but yeah, definitely fun to look back at pictures, but I agree with Manon. Like, I was overhyped, so not missing too much, just a dance. Yeah, that's good. I w hopefully, I'll have a chance to wear a tuxedo at some point in my life because those things look absolute gas, in my opinion. So, <laughs> now the license thing, Emma, I'm curious because I don't know if you knew this, but getting a license in Massachusetts is the hardest state to do that in. So, I'm curious is it the same thing in Minnesota? It's very hard to get. And how crazy are the drivers in Minnesota? And Amanda, you can attest to this as well, because in the East Coast, they're absolutely crazy. So, Yeah, it's definitely a different style than the East Coast when I've been out there. Um, I say the East Coast is a lot more aggressive drivers, but I am kind of a grandma driver, my teammates have told me. So I don't think I would be a good driver out there, but um, it's, it's not too hard to get your license. I failed my first test, unfortunately, but... Um, yeah, I think you get as many tries as you want, and you just have to get a permit before that. So it's not too difficult. Yeah, it's not too difficult. Emma and I both got licensed, so it can't be that hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't worry. I failed my first driving test, too, so it's not a big deal. Um, at least, at least I, don't, I don't think it's a big deal if you fail it once, so um, it's all good. Uh, I didn't know how to – I struggled uh, parallel parking. That was kind of my thing that failed me, so – but. And the funny thing is, after I parallel parked on my driving test, I've never had to do it ever again. So I just that, that I just think that's funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Now, next topic for is, what is the worst visiting locker rooms in college hockey that you have experienced? Now, Emma, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I've been told that St. Thomas visiting locker room is not the best. But um, I guess you can explain or defend it a little bit. Um, well, I've always played at St. Thomas Academy, so I really do like a rink, but obviously I might be biased compared to others. Um, 
But I think something that's been really cool this year is going to see all these rinks in the WCHA that I haven't been to yet. And I would say everyone has a pretty good barn. So I don't think anyone has a bad visiting locker room, but I don't know when we're getting a new rink, but hopefully we'll be pretty soon. I would have to disagree. I think that Minnesota has the worst visiting locker rooms because one, people have to sit on fold out chairs, which is usually our freshmen. And we always feel bad, like throwing their stuff like under the chair and like, they aren't really like close to all of us. So I feel bad about that. And also their showers have like very low water pressure and they're always super cold, but it's always great to play in any arena. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, that's surprising to me because I feel like Ritter would be one of the better ranks to play in. Well, I know it is, but, like, I would think the locker room is a little bit nicer just because it's one of the newer ranks in the league. Yeah, you would think. So that's pretty interesting. But uh, what's, like, the best warm-up mix you've heard in other stadiums in the WCHA? I want you guys to kind of, like, just tell me, like, which ones have the best, and you guys can kind of, like, tell me because I've actually never been to any WCHA rank before. I love UMDs. I know man is going to love to hear that, but that was one of my favorite mixes. Um, I think Bemidji has a super good one too, but UMDs was really, really good. Yeah, I would have to say ours. We worked really hard on that and they have really good speakers at Amsoil. So it's really clear to hear on the ice as well. But I also do love Bemidji, like Emma said. Who does the warm-up mix for just like one of your teammates do it or is it like some guy that you know? We have actually done our own in the past. However, we do have a great DJ that plays during our games. He has like his own stand up in the bleachers, but um, Naomi Rogi kind of led the the tackle on that one. She pretty much did the whole thing with input of others, but yeah, it's pretty good. That's awesome. So shout out to her. We've had her on the podcast before. So um, obviously that's a, that's kind of a hard job just because you have to kind of get like everyone's like taste in, but also like make it like kind of mix well. So I, it's honestly a job that I couldn't do. So that's a, I don't know if you could do it, but I think that's very difficult. Yeah. It took her like a lot of days to get that done. Cause it's like a 30 minute mix. So she did a really good job. Is it available on SoundCloud? Because I know some teams put theirs up there um, and I like to listen to them occasionally. So I don't know, uh, should she put it up there because everyone's been raving about it. So I feel like she has yeah. to. I'll have her put it up there. I don't think it is. So and then speaking of uh, Emma, who does the who does like the pregame warm mix for St. Thomas? And if no one else does that, then who's like the DJ on the team? Um, yeah, the mix we've been using is actually from a couple years back uh, when I was a freshman. Um, our captain made it, so we got to do a little updating on that. But hopefully next year we'll get a new one. But it's still pretty good, just some older songs. So now we kind of alluded to this in the beginning of the episode, but uh, best pregame outfits on your team. We talked about Mannion, how she pulled up with some great style. So, but Mannion, besides yourself, like who has the best um, pregame outfits on the team? Yeah, I definitely think that Kaylee Skinner is an underrated pregame outfit expertise. She pulls up in some, cr- some cool hats with like a pantsuit. But also going back to the red carpet, um, Emma Soderberg, our goalie, had like a hot pink I saw that. Um, that was awesome. blazer with um, work pants on. So that was super cute as well. Emma, you have the best style in St. Thomas, but who's number two? I think we've talked about <laughs> this before. Either Fiona. Yeah. You, Fiona and Marky are tied with the best style. So um, Oh, good. Because I was going to say those two. <laughs> yeah, those two definitely um, – put in a lot of work for their outfits but yeah Fiona always has those bright colors on and she always pulls off some crazy outfits that look amazing on her so she definitely is her and Mark here probably the top yeah when you guys went to Lindenwood this year uh she was like you guys posted your pregame outfits and she just screamed out roll toms I'm curious does she do that for every game or was it just when the cameras were on no she's always like that workout at 7 a.m she's yelling at everything so it's a good energy no, obviously you, Mannion, played in the Frozen Four, and the Frozen Four this week is for the men. So I'm curious, what is one spot in women's hockey that you think should have the Frozen Four, in your opinion, in, like, the future? Um, well, Duluth is uh, the host next year, which we're super excited about. But if it wouldn't be in Duluth, 
I would love for it to be in Boston. I think that that's such a cool city. And I think hockey really supports, uh, or the community really supports hockey in Boston. So I think it would be super cool to play there. Emma, you can go next. Yeah, no, me and Manon both, I've always talked about how we want to move out to the East Coast together. Yeah, Boston's a great, great city, but it would be cool. Um, I don't know be cool maybe to try out Arizona I know on the boys side they're establishing a program there so I think it'd be cool to kind of shake it up but yeah I think out east definitely Boston would be a good place well Vegas is supposed to get one in 2026 for the men's side so I'm excited for that one I will kind of hope they I wish they did a little more in like kind of unique areas because at least for the women's side I feel like they do it in like the same five places like every other year so I feel like they should change it up for the women's side but I know they did one at BU like in 2009 so it should be back in Boston sometime soon, you would think. Yeah, it's been cool to see, like, term- term- tournaments going out to, like, Nashville and stuff, too. And I think there was one in Vegas a few years ago. So going out to some of those cities would be super cool as well. Yeah. And obviously, how excited are you for Duluth to host the tournament? Um, obviously, you don't want someone winning a national championship in your home rank. So do you think that adds motivation for your team next year, knowing that you're hosting it? Oh, for sure. And just having like our home crowd advantage, we have such great fans. And I think that even more would come if it's the Frozen Four. So that would be such a great atmosphere to play in. Yeah, Boston, I agree. So I'm excited. It's going to be, I'm gonna, it's going to be technically here this week. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. And yeah, no, I feel like that they should definitely bring the women's Frozen Four to Boston. I'm curious. I know I'm asking you this. I, I kind of asked you this, but I like the visual aspect of the Frozen Four at Penn State much better than Erie. Was it better playing at Pagula than it was in Erie? You can just be completely honest about that. Yeah, I think a lot of factors play in it too, like COVID and everything. We had a lot more fans, but I definitely think Pagula was the most beautiful rink that I ever played in. So I, I really enjoyed it there as well. Now we'll start off with the next topic is Emma. What is one thing that a lot of people like that you do not like at all? Um, I think probably roller coasters. I'm afraid of heights. And so a lot of people like those and I do not at all. I agree with you on that. Actually, I don't like riding roller coasters as well, but for me, how I got started and this is recently, but I was scrolling through like YouTube. I I don't know how like, this video ended up on my feed, but there was like like it was like an animation of like how someone like died in a roller coaster, like how they fell out, and it freaked me out. So I never want to ride them again. And apparently there was another story of a kid falling off like a roller coaster and dying too. So though, after seeing those videos, like I'm like I can't do it. It just freaks me out. So I'm not a big roller coaster guy myself. Yeah, that's valid. We have a place here in Minnesota called Valley Fair, which is like a huge amusement park. And we used to, people used to go all the time and I'd always just sit and watch them go on the roller coasters just because, yeah, I'm the same way. I just don't like the heights. But at least there's like other stuff to do there, right? Or is it just like roller coasters? Um, I think there's other stuff to do there. In Halloween time, they make it like into like a haunted house type of thing. So that's kind of fun. I'm not scared of any haunted house. I'll tell you that right now. Like, <laughs> I think those things are kind of ridiculous. I'll walk right through straight face, nothing. I'm confident myself in saying <laughs> Good. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun there and during Halloween time for sure. Now, Manion, what is one thing that everyone likes that you don't like at all? Well, I love roller coasters, but I think one thing that my teammates like that I don't would be cats. I actually live with four cats because I live with all my teammates and four of them have cats. So that's kind of a lot for me, but <laughs> I don't know that everyone loves cats, but my teammates definitely do. How do you handle it if you don't like them so much? Do you just keep them away from your room? The, the ones that I live with particularly are fine. They kind of do their own thing. But, yeah, I'm, I, I'm more of a dog person for sure. Yeah, I feel like dogs are more friendly as well. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever owned a dog before? Um, my family has one. Um, I personally haven't, but I love our family dog. Nice. What breed is it? It's a Bernese uh, mountain dog mixed with a poodle, so a Bernadoodle. So it's like, is it like a big dog, small dog, or like medium it's, sized? It's a smaller dog. It's like a medium sized dog, but she has, she's really fluffy, so she looks huge, but she's actually really skinny. Now, Emma, do you own any pets at all? 
Uh, not personally, no, but my family also has a dog. It's a little standard schnauzer. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Uh, next thing is if you could host a talk show, who would be your first guest? I would probably say Kaprizov, that place for the wild. Um, I'm a huge wild fan, and he just marked, I think, the top top points in the wild organization history. So probably him, and I think he's really funny too. So I'd be interested to interview him. Yeah, sticking with the sports, I would probably have Alex Morgan or another U.S. national women's soccer player. I love soccer, and I especially love the national team. And – I used to play soccer. I was a forward like Alex. So I think listening to her and I think she has great input on a lot of things in life as well. That's awesome. How was your soccer career? Did, did you like, did it help with you at hockey at all? I feel like you were probably a goal scorer. What's like your best selling? Because <laughs> did you ever try the Ronaldo? I, I don't know if you've seen oh, that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the Ronaldo. But I, yeah, I love soccer. I definitely struggled with which one I wanted to play in college just because I loved both of them so much. Um, yeah. What made you choose hockey at the end? Um, I think I was always more into hockey. I mean, I played boys growing up and just all the commitment and work that I put into hockey. But I think my love was definitely with soccer just because some of my best friends played soccer growing up. But I think more competitively, I was into hockey. That's awesome. Uh, who's, do you like fall soccer or do you just play soccer? No, I follow soccer as well. I love watching it. Who's your favorite club? Um, well, I'm really interested to um, see the Aurora. It's a new um, club in Minnesota. So I-, I love women's soccer mainly. So any women's soccer team I love. Nice, nice. I, I-, I mostly watch the Premier League. I think that's a really entertaining league. Obviously, I'm a big Man United fan because of Ronaldo. He's like my favorite um, non-hockey athlete. So I think he's a really cool dude. So that's who I fall. But how excited are you for the World Cup coming up uh, this year? Oh, yeah. I'm pumped. I'm so excited to watch. No, Emma, do you watch or play soccer at all? No, I didn't. In high school, I played golf. So, That's yeah. So not, fun, not, yeah, no, I love it. Or do you like, watch golf or just play it? Uh, my family is huge in the golf, too. So, yeah, I'm excited to watch the Masters this year. I love Dustin Johnson, so I'm excited to see him play. Uh, who do you think who's who do you think's gonna win the Masters? Uh, I have no idea, honestly, but I'm excited to watch it. I'm gonna say Justin Thomas. I just looked up like random golfers like on Google, and that was like the first guy that popped up. So why not yeah. him? Uh, just single <laughs> random. So I don't know if no, you... yeah, he's one of my favorites. So yeah, I think that's, that's a good guess. That's good, Manny. Do you watch golf at all? No, I'm not really into <laughs> golf. It's too slow for me. I will say playing golf is a lot of fun though. Um, it's, I haven't played in a few years, so I'm probably stuck now, but like, it's like a blast, like with your friends, just like in the course, just, it's very stressful sport, but it's like super calming as well. Like if you play it, you know what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you've yeah. had that experience as well, Emma. Yeah. I think golf and hockey too, some of the motions go hand in hand. So I think a lot of hockey players and former hockey players have that advantage to some other people. Yeah, I feel like a lot of hockey guys play golf for some reason. I don't know. Maybe because it's just a summertime sport. But I, I do want to ask you, like, what's your thoughts on this year's World Cup? I find it interesting that it's going to be in the fall just because it's going to be played in Qatar, I'm pretty sure. And it's, like, so hot there. They have to do it in the fall. Um, but what's your thoughts on the U.S. group? I think it's going to be a very exciting game against England. That's the one I'm looking forward to the most. Oh, yeah. I love any game, especially against England. Those are always great matches. Um, yeah, the fall will be interesting. That's I didn't know that it was because of the heat that they had to do that, but yeah, super excited. What was your thoughts? I know the U S women, I know you say you follow them a lot. I remember when they played England a couple of years ago and Alex Morton did the teacup move when they, she beat England. That's like, do you think that's the best celebration that you've seen from any of the U S women's um, soccer players? Oh yeah. I, I think that's definitely the best. Now for, I guess, I, I guess I'll answer that question as well. So if I would host a talk show, I would actually, do it right now uh, with uh, Emma Larson and Manny McMahon. I think that's two very solid guests in my opinion. So if I, if I had to say so myself. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> so now getting back, to, there's enough. So music, we kind of talked a little bit of warm up music, but like what do you guys listen to 
like what do you like i guess what music do you guys listen to like on a general basis we'll start off with emma yeah i love country music so every time i'm walking to class or doing homework i always have country in um so i would say that's probably my favorite genre yeah i think emma and i are really similar in our music we always send each other songs that we have to listen to um i love country i also love rap i love pop i kind of like everything but just whatever's good i'm the same way i have a playlist of each genre so I have a country playlist, EDM playlist, pop playlist, rock playlist, and hip hop playlist. So whatever mood I'm in, I just go to that playlist and click exactly. whatever song I want. So I feel like I find it so odd that when there's people that only listen to one genre of music, Emma, are you that way? Do you only listen to country? No, no, I love all types of music. So yeah, I guess it just depends on what mood I'm in. So who's like y'all favorite country artists? Have you ever gone to like a concert uh, together before? No, we haven't, but um, we should. <laughs> uh, I'd say my favorite is probably John Party. Uh, I saw him in Eau Claire, Wisconsin this past summer, so that was really fun. And I like Old Dominion too a lot. Yeah, I've been to Zach Brown Band a couple times, but I also love Morgan Wallen, so that's a hard choice. I've never heard of Old Dominion or John Party, but I have heard of Zach Brown Band and Morgan Wallen. I think Morgan Wallen's a great artist, but I'm kind of, I guess, I don't know if he's old school or not, but I like Darius Rucker. I think he has some good songs. I think Wagon Wheel is a great summer song where you can just put it on um, in the summertime and just like listen to it, like going through like a field. I think it's awesome to listen to. That's my personal favorite. So I don't know if you ever listened to him at all. Yeah, I've heard of him. Um, I think he's pretty good too. I think he's a little old school, but he's still good. That's awesome. Hey, old school sometimes, sometimes you got to throw back the hits. I don't know. <laughs> throw back Thursday. It's always, it's always good too. So oh, yeah. and obviously Thomas Rhett is very good as well. I like his music a lot. I know he's going on tour recently, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll see him or not, but uh, I, I haven't been to a concert in a little bit. So mm -hmm. actually that's a lie. I went to one in October, but what was like the last concert you guys went to? Um, I think the one in Eau Claire was like a country festival. So that was a lot of fun just to see different artists. I'm trying to think. I think it was Zach Brown Band, actually. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is the most embarrassing hockey moment that you've ever had? Um, well, man is at fault for this one. So... It was in high school and I was jumping on the ice for practice and everyone was like making me go up first and I was really confused why. And I jumped on the ice and I totally like face planted and I couldn't get up. So I was so confused and I kept trying to skate and I kept falling. And um, Manon put clear tape on the bottom of my blade so I couldn't skate. But it's funny to look back and laugh at that now, but that was definitely um, very embarrassing for me. <laughs> Why'd you do that, Manion? <laughs> Emma and I are best friends. We always prank each other. Um, there's a very funny video that goes along with that story as well. <laughs> are you ever going to show it to anyone or is it just between you guys? Oh, no. I, I put it out there when it happened. <laughs> Emma Maybe that's why it's so embarrassing for her. <laughs> Has Emma pulled any pranks on you by any chance or are you more the prankster? Have you, Emma? I don't know. You definitely I can't have. I just can't think of any. Yeah, that's kind of our friendship, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. So, Manny, what's your most embarrassing hockey moment? Um, the one that comes to mind was actually a couple times when I played boys hockey. I went on the ice with skate guards on, classic, um, face plan in front of everyone. They all laugh at you. <laughs> Especially in front of the boys. That's just not something you want. <laughs> How do you make that mistake? I'm just curious. Do you just forget about it? So. Yeah, just probably wasn't focused for practice. It was just running out there and still on. Yeah. yeah. I think for myself, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I've ever told you this, Emma, but for me, it was like one time we had this drill in youth hockey where we would skate from the red line to the blue line and skate backwards and then skate to the other blue line it was like a backwards skating drill to help you like learn how to skate backwards back when you're like a peewee and some guy like opened the bench door 
So when I was skating backwards, I didn't see the bench door open. And I fell and like just fell inside the bench and it was like the most embarrassing moment I've ever had. Oh no. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was not a good look for you, especially when you're like 10 years old and like everyone's just laughing at you. But luckily there's like no footage of it. So I kind of made, made it through. Good. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, no. <laughs> I will say though, what helped was I went to like a Bruins game like a few days later, and like Tim Thomas, the former Bruins goalie, like fell like on his face like during warmups. So it made me feel a little better that it's not just like youth hockey players that fall down the ice. I remember my dad's like, "See, it just happens all the time. It doesn't matter if you're in the <laughs> NHL or not." So that definitely helped out me a little bit as well. That's now, funny. next topic is what is the nicest thing someone has ever said to you? I can't think of anything, so you guys have to go for it. Um, that's a hard question. Um, I can't think of, like, something in general, but something I take a lot of pride in is, like, working really hard, either if it's in school or if it's um, on the ice. So I just think probably something towards my work ethic, um, just because I take a lot of pride in that. The one that comes to mind for me um, – during the Frozen Four, I had a lot of people reach out, like previous coaches, previous parents, teammates, and just um, say that they watched or said that I did a good job. And I think that being able to have that impression on people to be able to want to support you later on is a super big compliment in itself. And then also just people like taking time out of their day to support me or to text me even is um, something that I was really proud of. So yeah, that's what comes to mind for me. Now, what, uh, Manny, what's like the best part of Emma's game in your opinion? Obviously, you've played with her for quite some time. Like, what's something that stands out with her game? In my opinion, I think she's one of the better defenders in the WCHA. Does not get enough credit. So, shout out to you, Emma. You're always shutting down some of the top stars in the WCHA. What's like something you notice about her game that other people might not? Yeah. Um, I mean, I could speak a lot about Emma's game, but I – one think that she's very physical and when you're physical in um, a women's game it, it definitely shows and it's hard to get around her going I remember going against her during the game and I I think I failed like three times but it's fine but yeah Emma, Emma's definitely one of the more physical D that we have to play against and she also um, works really hard like in the corners and stuff so it's it's really hard to get around her and I don't think a lot of people do and she blocks a lot of shots Oh, yeah, you got to block the shots. That's how you make uh, the dough. So, Emma, like, since you're a physical defender, have you ever, like, checked Mannion before during the game? Like, accidentally, of course? Yeah, accidentally, of course. But, yeah, there is a funny video of me taking my stick and putting Mannion <laughs> on the ice. But, um, yeah, I think it's just funny because we're both very competitive. <laughs> Now, Mannion, has Emma had any big checks, checks in high school? Because she was kind of hesitant to say it on the last podcast we had her on. So I was curious if you had anything to say, because uh, you probably know more than I would. Oh, she for sure did in high school. She was laying bodies in high school for sure. I, I can't think of a specific moment, but she definitely was. <laughs> now, Emma, what's like one part of Mannion's game that you like the most? In my opinion, is the forechecking that you do when you're not have the puck. I think you're one of the better forecheckers in the WCHA. And then I feel like you've added a lot of offensive side to your game this year, which has been awesome to see. So uh, from Emma's perspective, I was curious as a defender, what's something about Mannion's game that's really impressive? Yeah, I mean, Mannon's been such an amazing hockey player. I mean, growing up and seeing how much he's grown from high school to now is crazy. But I agree with you, like, especially as a D, when that puck gets dumped in and I see Mannon going to forecheck me, I mean, any D should be nervous because she is so determined and she's, like, she's very aggressive and, like, especially in the corners too. So I definitely think, like, every D should be worried when they see her coming. But on the offensive side of things, like she's always in the right place at the right time. She's getting those tips and those rebounds. And I think that's such a crucial part, especially in how fast like the WCHA is, is being in the right place at the right time. And as a center, she's so offensive, but she knows how to play the D zone too. And as a D, I can attest how nice it is to have a center that can get back and help. And she definitely did that in high school too as well. Now, is Mannion physical at all? Like, has she ever laid the body out in anyone in high school? Because I would never asked her that before, so. <laughs> she definitely is very aggressive as well. I think the boys' hockey um, played a role in that, too. So, <laughs> maybe it's a Maple Girl thing. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I will say, um, 
I feel like, man, you have underrated hands. Uh, there was a goal in high school that you scored where you absolutely just undressed this goal. I don't know if you remember it. It was like on like, it was like on like when you look at her name up on YouTube, it was like one of the first videos that showed up. I was curious uh, what your perspective on it was. I thought that was awesome. And how do you get good hands? Is it genetics or is it just like hard work? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I have good hands, but <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think we all work on it growing up, like stick handling, shooting pucks it's in the garage. This is what you kind of do, but Definitely not genetics. I have no hockey background whatsoever. 